Fight Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Welcome to Right Night. I am Travis Sivart. I'm your host, and uh, there's a cat in my way. Tonight, we're going to talk about Anchor series and sequels, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. First of all, I want to let everybody know that we are an adult show with adult language and adult topics. So, <laughs> um, for those of you joining us via podcast, Thank you very much for that. I want to let you guys know we have a live audience in chat. So when you hear this noise, it means I'm going to be reading some comments from chat. Though I might just slide them in without having to ding the bell, if you know what I mean. Um, also, I want to throw this at our chat right now. Is uh, <laughs> Sorry, chat right now is throwing their underwear on stage. Thank you so much for that. It's, I needed a spare pair. These Whoa. Are <laughs> I've done the four-day thing with these. We're good. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, my quick thought is that's a horrible idea because when you turn them around, doesn't that mean you can have streaks on your junk now? Ew. So, yes, I'm Travis Sivart. I have written an incredible series called 27 Thoughts on Social DIY, which includes things like 27 Thoughts on Writing. They are super short, simple, to the point, lean with no fat books. And they cover anything from writing to pipe smoking to steampunk to I forget what the fourth one in the series is. So there we go. Now I'm going to pop this right over to the incredible and awesome person who's on your screen on the right-hand side, Michael Thompson. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Michael Thompson. I'm an independent author and illustrator uh, of many things of sci-fi fantasy stuff. And uh, one of them is Winslow Hoffner's Incredible Encounters. Great book. Folkloric fantasy, high seas, cryptids, sea monsters, epic uh, tales of adventure told by uh, the gallant fisherman Winslow Hoffner to a couple of journalists who discover mm -hmm. their small harbor town is harboring incredible secrets. You can find it on my website, michaelthompsonbooks.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, books.com, as well as my other series, like Chicken Boy and World of the Orb. Very good. Aaron? Uh, hi, I'm Aaron Kennedy, uh, A-A-R-O-N, last name Kennedy, just like the dead presidents. Um, not to be confused with the band The Dead Presidents. Uh <laughs> Author of Persona Non Grata, first in the Ships of Valor series, currently working on Icarus Black, uh, set in the same universe. Uh, I've been published in the Army Times uh, and the NCO Journal uh, for my nonfiction works. Um, yeah, that's about it. Very good. I also want to remind folks about our other podcasts. We have Talk of the Tavern. We have uh, Stealing for Survival, the Dungeons and Dragons game that's played in the world that I'm currently writing a novel in, the third novel in the series, and the second series in that world. Um, don't forget, you can find Aaron Kennedy's books at bit.ly slash Aaron Kennedy. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash A-A-R-O-N Kennedy, like the deceased president. And also uh, mine at bit.ly slash Travis Books. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis Books. And that's our merchandise as writers. So to show your love and support, grab a book and post a review. So there we go. Um, a couple other things to give you the timeline of where we're at. This week, when we recorded this episode... There was a presidential election, and Joe Biden had come in in the lead, and there's that. But also, it's NaNoWriMo. This is November National Novel Writing Month, and uh, we're definitely showing some love and support to that on each episode that we do during this month. Okay, I think I got it all covered on that. Let's get straight to the topic. <clears throat> So, action series and sequels. One thing we love as consumers of entertainment 
is when somebody does more of what we loved. So whether that's a second or a longer series. And there's reasons to do this above and beyond people love it. There are business reasons to do it that we're going to discuss. And during this, I'd love to talk about some of the people, shows, books that we love because of the sequels. Possibly didn't necessarily catch us on the first one, caught us on a later one and made us go back to the first or more. As well as what we're doing in our own writing journey in this. Aaron, can we start with you? Got some thoughts on the topic? Sure. Yes, yes, yes. So, I would like to talk about vanilla ice cream. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering... The the sequel. Sequel. French <laughs> chocolate ice cream. Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, no, I'm going to just hit this up, okay? So, vanilla ice cream, okay? Vanilla is one of the most nuanced flavors there is, mm. okay? It goes with everything. Um... People love it. It sells probably the best out there. Yes, there's chocolate, there's peanut butter, but when it really boils down to it, vanilla is superior. Oh, my. Okay. That's a bold statement. Yes, yes. People, people are going to argue this all day long, and they are wrong. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> okay. No, uh, yes, you can have your peanut butter chocolates. You can have all this other stuff, but they're going to keep coming back to vanilla, okay? And they're going to go, oh, I would like vanilla with chocolate. I would like vanilla with peanut butter. I would like vanilla with sprinkles because it's a great standby. Take a look at our series, all right? You have Rocky. You have Rambo, okay? How many... How many movies are in the Rambo series? How many movies are in the Rocky series? How many movies have Sylvester Stallone in it? Okay. Apollo Creed, uh, Apollo Creed first appears in Rocky. Okay. We have six movies in the Rocky series. And then we have Creed and the second Creed movie on top of that, which are all part of the same damn series. Spinoffs. They're spinoff. They're not even spinoffs. They're continuations. They're reboots. Mm. Okay? Of which Jay and Silent Bob make fun of. Mm. Okay? And they're part of a reboot series, which are all part of the same View Askewiverse. Which goes back to friggin' Clerks, Dogma, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. All of that. We like familiarity. We like the familiarity of vanilla and all this, which I'm a firm believer of capitalizing on because I wrote Persona, <laughs> Persona Non Grata. I was going to create the Sips of Valor series. I created this nice little tight universe. And I was writing the second book um, called Politicus, okay, where our lead character... Um, Eric Gadsden is taking the lead. And I got stalled on it, and I realized something. I realized it wasn't working. So the book is dead stopped right at the height of the book. And I'm like, you know what? Something's not right here. And I had an idea for another character called Icarus Black. Icarus Black is Harry Potter in space. Mm -hmm. in, a very simple, in a very simple explanation. <laughs> It is a very good pitch. Thank you very much, sir. I freaking stole that pitch from you, sir. I thought, how would Michael Thompson explain this? I was like, I've got a space opera, and I've got a kid right at that age. Damn it, it's Harry, it's Harry Potter in space. Very good, very good. Right. I'm honored that you... Right. Can I do this in five words? Yes, I can. Let's try it in four. And I did. But I wanted to build familiarity, and I wanted to do it in how many books? How, how long can I stretch this out, and how much money can I make <laughs> off of it? <laughs> I mean, can I do it in two books? <laughs> no, really, I was like, okay, I want to have a good character development. I want to have great arc. And I'm like, okay, threes. Three's the magic number. And I'm like, you know what? Star Wars, Star Wars has three arcs of three. 
Let's do that. So I stole that. Because I'm, I'm a bloody thief. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so we did that, and then I stole from myself and go, you know what? The ship's the best damn character in my other book. I stole from myself. myself. <laughs> did, did you flip a coin to do it? Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, not at all. I knew what I was doing at the time. I didn't need to. So I said, I got three arcs of three. I got a ship. I got a character with a kick-ass name. He does have a great name. I remember when you first dropped that name. <laughs> right. Show, and we're like, that, that's a badass name. Right. And you know what? Thinking of badasses, I need a badass quote. And I said, you know what? You know what? You know how you become a badass? By doing badass things. Yeah. And that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> so what do you think, Michael? Mm. Wait, we don't that. get a chance really to love... comment on this first? <laughs> well, no, no. I'm just letting him comment. And oh. then you get to comment. Oh, okay. And then we'll go back to me for rebuttal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're revealing. Because that's how I roll. I like it. Uh, I, I loved your, your vanilla. Um... Uh, uh, monologue, like yes, <laughs> well, you should, sir, because it it's me badass. <laughs> Aaron's becoming the. I am the second best orator since Barack Obama. <laughs> His friends call him Barry. <laughs> this, is a, this is like, I was thinking about your your vanilla and the tagline of vanilla. It's a vanilla. They always come back. Yep. Baby. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, what was I gonna say? We don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I love the vanilla thing. Uh, yeah, okay, so, so marketability, and, and also, and also planning out, planning out the series, so, uh, I, I go, going toward what, what, what calls to you, I think that's, that's a, that's a, that's a really smart move. Um, wherever, wherever you're being, you're being beckoned, uh, creatively, that, that should, I think, um, uh, take, take, take the first, uh, uh, take precedent over, over 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 the other the other things um, that may that may draw you to do uh, different works. Uh, if you if you're drawn to it, if it's calling out to you, if it's unfolding in your mind naturally, I think that it, it was smart to sort of uh, jump ship or spaceship as it were, and uh, ah. and, and fly into your, your news. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> all sorts of cleverness <laughs> happening on right night. <laughs> you know, Travis loves puns too, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I'm still not sure how vanilla fits into sequels. <laughs> I don't know, but it was so captivating. <laughs> it was definitely captivating, <laughs> but I'm still stuck. Hey, have you bullshitted today? Because I have. <laughs> it was familiarity. It was familiarity. That was it. That was, that oh, was the right, metaphor. Right. That, that was the key. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I have much to say to what you just said, because... <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> I think I got an aneurysm. <laughs> Mesmerized. Uh, instead, I'll read comments. Uh, Weird one <laughs> says, and then you realize the book didn't taste like vanilla. To Ginter mm. says, gasp, you mean you stole another writer's idea. That's why you shouldn't read other people's work while you write. Sarcasm, by the way, because we discuss that a mm -hmm. lot, is uh, read other people's work. Learn the good and the bad from them. Um, so, no, I, I really don't have much to, to uh, follow up on what you said there. What about you, Michael? Nor you should you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, stole, I stole from myself is another one of my favorite right night quotes now. Um, that, that and everything involving the coin in the previous episode. I think we have a new. I think we have a new show title, sir. I stole from myself. I stole from myself, writing the sequel. Yeah, I think that that's. Um, uh, so I recently finished writing uh, what is the final draft, or the just nearly almost quite possibly just with a little bit more polished final draft of my sequel. I'll be the judge of that, sir. <laughs> I'll have it on your desk in the morning. Thank uh, you. <laughs> of, uh, of, of Winslow Hoffner's Incredible Encounters. This is the second Winslow book. I'm not going to reveal, reveal the title yet, but I'll, for, for our viewers on, on twitch.tv, I'll show you, I'll show you my, my little manuscript here. This is, Ooh. there it is. Yeah, I don't think the cover is very catchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. It, and it's it upside down. It's a little floppy too, because it's all paper. I had to I had to graduate to rings instead of the um, brass fasteners, brass colored fasteners. So, because um, this is a this is a little bit thicker than the first one. And I was talking to Travis on the phone. That's what she said. Um, when I was in the middle of writing this, because I started writing this during the lockdowns, and uh, and I was like, and I and I told him, I said, yeah, it's getting, 
it's it's get it's it's bigger. It's it is it's, it's bigger. And and Travis is, uh, says that's what uh, she what said about uh, 25 percent larger, 30 percent. I was like, yeah, I think exactly. And, and he's like, yeah, of course. And 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 then he, and he broke down the math and 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 what and and like the expansion of the world that occurs in this in the sequel. I was like, you know your stuff, my dude. Um, and it was inc it was incredible. So and it, it was interesting because I I had written sequels for Chicken Boy. And and Chicken Boy kind of uh, it it has a it's it's a little bit more each one's a little bit more contained you know there's the the villain shows up and they they have to work together to try and figure out um, how to beat the villain there's an initial fight I, I sort of noticed like like an inter Chicken Boy uh, structure uh, within those but uh, this this is this is this will be my first novel sequel and um, I'm noticing that uh, and to tell this story how the how the structure. Sort sort of uh, sort of sort of adjusted, and how the the focus of the story adjusts, and who and who uh, has has the spotlight more so in the sequel. Um, I wonder I wonder if you guys uh, uh, noticed that um, if if the if the spotlight of attention for the story uh, sort of finds a new focus when you're writing the sequel. I definitely have some responses to what you've said there. First of all, yeah. what I'm hearing from what you're saying, it sounds like. Uh, when writing sequels, and I have thoughts on my own here that I'll go into later, is but yeah. one thing when you're writing sequels, there's formula versus free form. Mm -hmm. Chicken Boy, you have a formula. It's mm -hmm. going to follow the same pattern each time, which creates comfort in your reader. They know what to expect. It's just a new story with that same framework. Free yep. form is where you go in the... Well, it's a little more free, obviously, from the word itself. Now, to answer your question, do you find that yes? Matter of fact, in the books that I'm writing now, the Portal series, where I'm working on book three, I purposely set it up that way, where the focus does change. Because each book, there's three primary characters, and each book, at the end of one, one leaves. And in the next book, mm -hmm. a new one comes in. So you always right. have two characters that you know, and one character that's new to the world. So I can reintroduce the world if somebody picks it up in a later book. They're getting the world shared with them for the first time also. And mm -hmm. this is allowing me to change that focus. But I do find, as I go further on, I love focusing on villains. Because they're a one-shot. And yeah, it's a beautiful thing of... You kind of explore them intensely for a short period of time instead of stretching their story out. You've got to get straight to their core. Um, yeah. And and I do love that. Aaron, thoughts on what he just said? Uh, so, because I've got this one mapped out as in a, um, in a much bigger arc, I freaking did the three arcs of three. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I had to plan out my villains in three big, vi in big, basically three big villain arcs. Um, nice. Right. I've got a Federation arc, an Imperial arc, um, and my third arc, which I'm not revealing at the moment. Um, I'm dealing with basically a crumbling empire um, as everything's happening. Uh, so I didn't want to create the situation of where I'm dealing with the next big bad after the next big bad after the next big bad. Um, so I've got a continuation of villains that are happening. But I also wanted to have the situation to where, yes, the situation is resolving at the end of book one, but the problem is still progressing so things are getting darker yeah overall one problem is fixed the next problem is still there but everything has got to kind of move forward so you're on this roller coaster to where you're going up down up down up you hit a culmination point to where things are bad at the end mm. of the first arc resolve and you kind of you're moving into this thing um it's a rhythm it's a very much so a rhythm so that one arc uh, icarus is freaking 
progressing forward, um, Val, the ship, is progressing forward because what I've done is I've set them up as parallel characters that are doing their thing. Um, our mentor character is along th for the ride. Uh, treat, him, uh, treat him as our Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, as he's going along following these two characters, he's a father figure to one, a mentor for the other. They have their own conflicts as they're doing their thing. So I've got to create interpersonal conflict. I've got to create villain conflict between our mentor as everything that's happening. And I've got to create the situation that's got to affect all four of them constantly. Mm. So the tone is definitely shifting as it's all reflecting off of each other. Yeah. The yeah, um, tonal shift, I think, is, is inevitable. Right. When you're doing a long, a long series. Uh, to tie it into the Harry Potter analogy, when you look at the first one, the villain is just, they're just focused on the school and the villain there. Um, this is more akin to Star Wars to where Empire Star Strikes Back is a dark, dark friggin' movie. Uh, Return of the Jedi is kind of light in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just because, uh, shoot, at the end of Empire Strikes Back, Luke's got his hand cut off, Han's friggin' frozen in carbonite. Um, Spoilers. I know, I know. And you find out that friggin' uh, Darth Vader has been <laughs> screwing Chewbacca the entire time. <laughs> was that the special editions? <laughs> <laughs> it was. I mean, had, had we been watching the subtitles, we would have known all along. Because that's time. where... <laughs> Because that's what R2-D2's been saying <laughs> as he's been beeping along. Mm -hmm. um, one thought to add to what Aaron was saying there before I voice my thoughts on the topic is something I've done in the Portal series is there is a third-tier character, a second-tier villain in book one that becomes the primary villain in book two. And the same thing from book two to book three so basically the arcs have interconnected where you have a lesser arc in the first book and it becomes the primary arc in the second book as the villain moves his motivation and goals forward and uh, I found myself <clears throat> without ever meaning to doing this and now as I'm writing the third book I'm seeing where I have a place that I can take a familiar third tier character or a second tier villain and possibly put it into the fourth book where it can create that same arc so so each book stands alone but if you're reading the whole series you're seeing where everything has affected everything else and influenced it now my thoughts on the topic itself <clears throat> is of course the business side of a series is if somebody <clears throat> finds you later they have stuff to go back to and they feel it's worth the investment of time when you have a series. It creates a loyalty for because people love to binge things. Look at Netflix for the most recent or any streaming service for the most recent. They love to sit down and just binge this. Readers are no different. Any person who likes entertainment wants to know more of the story if it's a good story that they enjoyed. <clears throat> but I'll say there are a couple types of series. There's episodic which is what Portals is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Each book is standalone. But like the Indiana Jones or the Pirates of the Caribbean, there can be callbacks to the other book that so it's tied together besides just characters. The second type is a continuation series. This would be like uh, George Martin's Game of Thrones, to use the common name, though it's actually the name of the first book, not the series. <clears throat> And then there's a connected series. So this might be a shared world. It might be a shared theme. Um, I do this a lot in my, my cycle books, my steampunk cycle as well as talent agency, <clears throat> where they're interconnected stories to create a larger arc. So it's showing what's going on in the world, whether it's the same characters going from story to story where they're separate adventures, if you will, but it creates a larger arc or 
such as talent agency, where they are separate characters in each story, but there is an overlying arc of the antagonist through each story, which is not an individual, but a corporation, which in the 90s we discussed if that was an individual or a not. And that's a whole other topic for a different show. A couple of comments. Uh, Tajinter points out that Chronicles of Narnia did that through most books, and that would be, you know, the, the same characters, different adventure and whatnot. And in response to Aaron's comment on Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back called you back to the third movie. A lot of people talk crap about it, but Jedi would have been nothing without the setup from Empire. And that's exactly true. The Empire totally set up the whole story arc for the third movie which is probably why I was so disappointed in Ewoks because I didn't feel it related to the story arcs I cared about. Well, one of the big things on that one was... Marketing? It well, uh, Really, it was when it was... It was supposed to be a much bigger... It was actually supposed to be like nine movies and Return of the Jedi, or it was supposed to end up being Revenge of the Jedi. Han was supposed to die in uh, Jedi... Friggin' Luke was supposed to end up dark and right. vicious, and it was the continuation of that story was supposed to be much darker than it ended up being. Right. Um, and they ended the series at that point instead of continuing along the path that they ended up taking. Right. It's uh. By the way, here's a question from <clears throat> the uh, chat audience. Spacey Tracy is here, asks, have you ever written a standalone book and later turned it into a series? So, Persona Non Grata was always intended to be one of four of the books of Ships of Valor. It wasn't necessarily supposed to be a continuation book. Um, Politicus, I turned it into a continuation, just following that story along. Uh, each of the Ships of Valor books was supposed to be focused on one of the four ships. Um, I just started the story immediately thereafter. Uh, but it, and Persona Non Grata itself is standalone. So, yes-ish. Yeah. Yes-ish. What about you, Michael? Yeah, Winslow, Winslow was originally going to be just a collection of short stories. Because um, I, I had written uh, Gambo... The, which is now the first chapter and Giganteus, which is now the finale of the book um, in high school and uh, those, those two stories were, you know, they were separated by quite some time and then when I was in college I wrote uh, The Trouble with Mermaids which became the second chapter of the book and it followed directly after uh, the events of Gambo, or what happened in Gambo. You know, we see uh, the story that John writes, and we see uh, John and his uh, work environment for the first time. Uh, and as I was writing it, and I was, and I, and originally, and I was preparing the marketing for this originally, I was going, I was like, okay, this will be like my little, my little sea stories, um, short story uh, compilation um, with the same characters, but, you know, different, you know, monsters and then as i was writing it i was like oh there's an there's an underlying story here this this is there's an arc happening and then winslow's past and everything uh with uh, the agency uh and uh his former uh friend uh, skialpi and everything that happens there and i'm like wow and so it turned into a book and at that point, I thought it was originally just going to be a standalone book. This will be my standalone. I'll have it to sort of add flavor to uh, the other stuff because I had an ongoing Chicken Boy series, and uh, my primary focus was going to be World of the Orb. Um, but it was – the book came together really fast, and I had all these ideas. And I was very immersed in, um, in the world that was, that was unfolding, this incredible world. Uh, that Winslow makes our main character John aware of, and uh, and then when I started writing uh, the second one, it starts with a brief flashback, um, which is uh, and this is this is very fun because it's it's a it's an event that was mentioned in the first book in conversation in the middle of the book, 
uh, when Scialpi says to Winslow in their car ride, he says, uh, if uh, speaking about um, the Beast of Busco, the reports of it, he says, if they're true, they'll certainly give Canvey Island a run for their money. And we start on Canvey Island uh, in the second book. So, haha. And and so it, it, so it's pretty cool. So I really liked what you guys said about um, uh, planting the seeds. And, you know, all of that stuff is in the first book, world building and, and lore. And, and it's, it's things that raise an eyebrow, raise a question. And then the second book, it's, it's uh, cool to be like, oh, here it is. And here's what happened. And then, of course, you know, more questions, more questions arise. So, so uh, yeah, w Winslow is one of those things. And, and in because uh, I, I think especially uh, because of for a few reasons, but par partly because of the lockdown, when I didn't have any events anymore, and I shifted more to the creation of the product. Um, Winslow is a shorter book than World of the Orb, and I calculated if. Um, I, I calculated from word count that that writing the entire Winslow series that was unfolding in my mind at the time that it would be it would be about the length of one big World of the Orb novel um, to write to write the the rest of the Winslow story. So I decided that you know during during this time when I don't have the events mm. that I would shift to that. Um, plus it was fresh in my mind, so it was a uh, it was a. It was a good choice for me at the time, so that that was part that was part of the decision to do that. And I had just recently become become aware of the term anchor series, and and having a complete finished series on the table or on your virtual bookshelf is a very strong thing. Um, it is, and, and I plus, want to go anchor, into that more in a few minutes. A that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Tajinter said, "Sometimes you can write." Sometimes as you write, you can feel like the story is over, but looking back, you have all the story hooks right there to latch on to. And, and that mm -hmm. is true. It's uh, interesting. We may have a haunting. What do you mean? Um, Andrea, my other half, for those that don't know, is in the other room. And she says, I think the office, her, ha her office, is haunted. Mm -hmm. Light started flickering, then cut off. As I got up, it came back on again. Went to sit down. It cut off again. Left the room, came back on. Go in, lights cuts hmm. off. Check the switch, seems a little loose, but can't work without light. Huh. This is interesting. Well, it all relates to the Talk of the Tavern episode we did a few weeks ago, where we told true ghost stories that happened to us, and in the middle of that broadcast as we were recording the podcast something that had been on her wall for years fell and there was no big sudden movements in the room no doors opening no cats doing anything um so yeah just an interesting tidbit there with series um i'd like to talk a little bit about what we mentioned before the the anchor series but I'd also like to bring up how you write a series, because sometimes you do start out with just a single book, and you've got to evolve it into a series. Other times, you start out with a series concept, and then you have to break it into regular books. Now, before I pass on this topic for you guys to throw some thoughts in, before I put mine in, I will preface this with, I personally dislike it when anybody ends a book on a cliffhanger where you have to get the next book <sighs> to find out what happens. Now, I love it when they give you the hooks for the next book. Yeah. But please give me a climax and a resolution to this book. And by the way, some of the most popular authors out there in, in the modern writing world have done this. George R. R. Martin has done this. Robert Jordan has done this, both of them fantasy authors. And as much as I've enjoyed their books, oh my God, stop it. But that's me. Don't sell me half a book. Please. Please. Or how about cut it off two chapters earlier? Mm. So you have a resolution. Open your next book with that. Um... <sighs> 
So yes, yes. Thoughts about either how to write a series, whether you're starting with a series concept or a standalone book and growing from there. And what was the other thing we were talking about? Damn it, I forgot. Anybody listening when I spoke? Because I know I wasn't. I'm sorry. I was talking to Jajinter about my drinking habits. Uh, <laughs> uh, apparently, I hold my mug in an Australian way or something. <laughs> Upside down? I don't know. <laughs> uh... I was holding the handle directly vertical. Is that an Australian thing, or am I a robot? I, directly vertical? I, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Am, am I? <laughs> okay. I don't know what I'm uh, doing. Uh, Do I need some... help, guys? Do I need an intervention? <laughs> You're okay. We'll, well talk yes, about right. but not about that. Oh. <laughs> it, keep in mind, so friggin'. I come from editorial side of things, so a lot of my stuff is pre-planned. Mm -hmm. um, I pre the articles that I've had published for Army Times, NCO Journal, and whatnot, uh, the first one was an experimental piece. Mm -hmm. It started off with, you know what, it was basically a challenge. I was like, you know, I could write a friggin' article in regards to this. This was my article in regards to the arm. Uh, Army has an uncontrolled, or the the military has a problem with <clears throat> developing leadership in concurrence with physical fitness. We have basically set up, in order to be a good leader, you have to be physically fit. What they have done is they've create a causal relationship between things based on a correlation. Therefore, if you are not physically fit, you are a bad leader. There's an issue there. Uh, they don't seem to understand it. It's a barriers to entry, barriers to promotion, so on and so forth. In essence, we've promoted people that are stupid only because they're strong. That's the article. Me and a uh, Army Major, now Lieutenant Colonel, wrote about 20,000 words. Well-researched, or actually extremely well-researched, cited, uh, submitted it. And when it boiled down to it, they go, holy crap, this is amazing. Uh, nobody will publish it because it's about 17,000 words past everybody's limit. Trim it down. Mm. Roger that. We trimmed it down. Got it to about 3,500 words. They edited it some more, changed them, and got it to about 2,500 words. We got it published. There is um, a wonderful, and, and Aaron, don't forget where you're going with this because yeah, I, yeah. I don't want you to lose track of this. No, but you're good. I started out doing short stories. It built certain writing muscles. Knowing how mm. to take an object lesson, a point, or any one thing and boiling it down to its barest essence and cutting out all the fat where you could take 20,000 words down to 15%. Uh, 3,000. Yeah, of what it was. That's an incredible skill to be able to do. And on the other hand, it's another skill set to take that 3,000 words and turn it into a full-length story. Mm-hmm. They're both uh, good. Wow. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it we got it published. That's the big thing. Reserve the rights to publish it in its full article form uh and everything. Um well received. It's actually my most read work combined of all the stuff that I've got. Hmm. Um Wow. Uh, we've got uh of views and reads and all that. It's in the probably twenty thousand realm. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it highlights kind of a point of where you can go with the kinds of things um, and the, the formats that you've got to build up on the other article does kind of the same thing eh, we, we were smarter about it this time of how we built it we only had to trim it about 20% to meet formats um from there, I built up the experiment of the book. The book, 
much better. Trimmed it about 15%. <laughs> what book? Uh, Persona Non Grata for, uh, for fiction. Um, <clears throat> now, did you work that paper into that book? Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, no. These were both nonfiction. The fiction book friggin' was building those, but I built well, it. All these were... Do you have rights to that first 20,000 words you wrote? Oh, yeah. I own it outright. If you own it outright, what I'd recommend is actually taking it and building on it in the sense of here's the military core, here's the real world, real world application, and write a nonfiction book using this. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're looking at uh, – uh, I've got another one coming in. Uh, they'll probably end up merging the three – into a uh, monogram, or not a monogram, a uh, book. Uh, it's not actually a book. There's a technical term for it. But I'd recommend um, publish it so it sells on Amazon so everybody gets a hold of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, well. Yeah, but I, I, I own the, I, I own the rights out, right? The Monetize, reason is, yeah. and I'll go into this later. I have done something like that, but go on. Mm -hmm. Um. But yes, I own the uh, the rights outright to the the, the whole work. Um, but uh, some of it's working all that out there, and developing those works into larger pieces, smaller pieces, um, component pieces, even. Um, Agreed. And that's the big piece there. Uh, when I was working on Persona Non Grata. Um, I had a vision in my head of one scene. That's where I started from. And basically, it was just a vet returning home from in a, what was the equivalent of an airport. Um, that scene is no longer in the book. Hmm. It's gone. Uh, but it was the starting point. Yeah. Um, Something it's not, oh, I've ahead. definitely done is taken a short story and branched into a full story. Oh, absolutely. And in some uh, I've cases, still got that, well, a short story that yep. wasn't written, but in my head it was a short story. But as I started to explore the concept and the idea, I went, this is more than a short story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the first 5,000 words of the original Persona Non Grata got cut. Right, and because... that was your short story. <laughs> mm-hmm. They, the roller coaster that is the book, it just didn't start. Do you still have... That short story somewhere? I have every draft of Persona Non Grata. What I'd recommend is grab that short story when you're ready. Not tonight, mm -hmm. not next this week. But as you publish your other books, especially book two of Persona Non Grata, where you go into, or the Ships of Valor, I should say. The book, yeah. book two of Ships of Valor, where you touch on the other ships, publish that short story for free on your website. That's your hook to your series where people get it for free. And it is also a little bonus extra to anybody who has bought the book. Here's a little more. Here's a little extra. Yeah, I've got I've got a couple of those. I've got freaking little segues. Uh, Smart thinking. Yeah, that's a great thing for a writer to offer. Instead of offering a free book on Amazon, you offer that one short story that expands the universe just a little bit, just a little more, <laughs> just a teaser to yeah, get them uh, into it. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, there's a uh, there's a Latin term for it. It's bellum friggin' uh, war stories. Um, bellum uh, and then stories oh, okay. friggin' whatever the Latin term is. I can't remember. I got it written on the friggin' the El notes. Story. Anytime I write a story in that universe. But it's uh, stories from uh, Whitecaps, the uh, the bar that takes that's in there. Uh, but I've got those. And then the Icarus Black stuff I've been building it slowly in there. Anytime I come up with, oh, okay, this makes sense for something that's going to happen in there. Something Val would do. Something that uh, John would do. Something that friggin' uh, Icarus would do. Something that friggin' Oka would do. These characters that I've developed in here. Um, the mentor figures. My, my See, Han. My friggin' Obi-Wan. My re friggin' Relating Han. to that... Um, one of the topics we'll get to in, in the weeks to come is the moral of the story, the character arc where they learn something, the lesson within the book. And I think your paper that you referred to that was 20,000 words whittled down to 2,500, mm -hmm. that is a lesson that could be embedded 
in multiple books that you don't have to be the perfect physical specimen to be incredible. Oh, absolutely. And that's a that's a thing that I've been trying to work out into into the Icarus Black universe. And I, I touch on it into friggin' uh, in Politicus. I mention it in uh, Persona Non Grata. Space is the great equalizer for physical fitness. Mm-hmm. Uh, because gravity doesn't affect us. Mm-hmm. Size actually becomes more important. If you're smaller, you're better off because you can fit in places better. Yeah, yeah. Strength doesn't mean much because everybody's super strong. Yeah, and smart. But not everybody's small. And smart, smart is important. Very important, yep. especially when you're fighting in zero G, considering push off, considering angles, considering cover is a totally different mm-hmm. story. Um, mm-hmm. Which. I, I want to move into a few other things because we only oh, have yeah. about 15 minutes left here. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, 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 you were okay. Um, and if you have more to say on that, I don't necessarily want to cut you off, but I want to introduce these other concepts. First of all, how to write a series. I want to talk about that. I want to give some thoughts right. on that. And what I'll say is, at one point in time, Talk of the Tavern, my other podcast, we changed the name to... <laughs> Sounds of Steam. It was a steampunk theme for about a year and a half. And in that, we did an episode that I called Steampunk for Simpletons. And we, afterwards, I went, this would make a great nonfiction book. And I took that one episode and the outline with the information we wanted to give in that one episode, two hours long, and turned it into a book. And that's what I'm hearing. That That's what I'm feeling with that paper that you mentioned, because personally as a guy who's never been the first one to be picked on any kind of team <clears throat> when it comes to physicality you know there is other things people can offer um yeah i also wanted to touch on turning a short story into a novel where you have that great concept which was your original thing that turned into persona non grata <clears throat> and how you do that and i think that ties back into how to write a series and we'll also touch on pantsing versus planning. I've just linked that article, by the way, over in the Discord channel. Uh, or excuse me, the Twitch channel. Oh, very good. Thank you. Oh, I see it there. Yeah. Um, yep. So, Michael, do you have some thoughts on any of this stuff we've been saying? Well, I think uh, the, the biggest thing is to follow your instincts as a writer. Um, all of these, it, it starts with, like, maybe that initial vision, like you mentioned. Aaron, what if your instincts suck? <laughs> well, that's where logic backs think, it up. Well, well it, it, write with it, your heart, but, edit but, with your mind. Right. I, I think I think uh, you're always meant to to start somewhere. You're always you're always called. There's a call to action, right? There's a call, and it's either that vision or, um, but it, and as you as you create it, you get a sense of what the art wants to be, and. You, you have to go with the flow. You, it, it, in, in that sense, you don't want to, like, cram, you know, your circular story into a square-shaped structure, right? You got you have to... Um, and, and that's something where, where, you know, when I'm writing a book and I'm like, oh, man, you know, these, these, are, these are some crazy decisions that, that on paper, you know, would... would, would it, it, might, it might scare, you know, the creator, but um, it, somehow, it somehow works. And then, uh, where where it needs more work, you, you don't want to you don't want to go against that feeling. I think you want to stick with it and make it work. Yeah, I have a thought on this. I read one book <clears throat> that was originally written as a blog. This person would post yeah. to their story every day or every week or whatever it was. And when they got to a certain point, they published a book, and later they published another book. That book was so long and meandering there was Mm -hmm. many times during the book i went get to the point what are we doing here but this person had i don't know 1200 reviews mostly Mm. positive (laughs) people loved it so this is something as the planning side of things i would have got gone oh my god don't do this edit that down get a precise tight storyline But they Mm -hmm. had this huge, meandering story that people love. 
So <laughs> this is where that yeah. maybe your instincts suck. I felt this person's instincts suck. But right. they wrote a very successful story, which they built up an audience via blog, and it blossomed into this novel that is very successful. Wow. And, and that's admirable because it's it's like and, and and you talk about this about like breaking the rules, you know, about mm-hmm. knowing the rules, understanding the rules, and then ultimately breaking the rules. And um, you know, for that for whoever that person was, it it may have it may have been like, you know, it, it it's calling me to write it this certain way. Mm-hmm. And you know, lo and lo and behold, it speaks to other people. Well so I stuck and, with that's it. the brilliant thing about art is the subjectiveness and then um, it was very finding match your interest it was character driven mm-hmm. and that's okay, why yeah. i stuck through it or stuck with it through the whole thing because i am drawn to characters right um the plot is secondary to a character it's a character's arc and it had constant character arc sometimes repetitive where they go through the same lesson again and again but mm-hmm. so do people yes they right. do throughout life when you're 40 and you suddenly realize you had to learn the same lesson five times and it still didn't stick, and now you're staring at this going, what am I going to learn? By the way, I want to read to Jinter's comment here. One of my biggest stories is a serial style based on the penny dreadfuls of old, love that concept, Mm. and putting them together into a larger, more robust world that links it all together. It works in that one story, but it's not something that would work well for a murder mystery. Always take your genre into account. This is something I did in the Steampunk Cycle books. They are a series of individual adventures that lead to a larger arc in each book with the same characters. They are Penny Dreadful style. They are essentially short stories, but like the Sherlock Holmes, there's a larger arc that branches across the multiple stories. And that's one way to do a series. It's taking that concept and blowing it up ten times. Yeah. So... And something interesting about uh, to Ginger Mentor's genre there, um, when you're when you're within a series, and you're within a a series that has a, a that 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 is a certain genre, what you may end up noticing is genres within genres. Mm-hmm. It's like oh you know here here's the um, like persona non grata version of a you know who done it or something you know what right. I mean so that you have the, these micro genres show up when you have this big big series. It's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> Book three. Hey, uh, the, <laughs> there we go. That's it's, it's on the air. It's in the wavelengths. <laughs> that's something I've enjoyed. Uh, Book three of Portals is very much two or three chapters is one adventure, but the book yeah, itself yeah. is one large arc. And I could mm-hmm. crop those two or three chapters and publish it separately if I wanted to. And it would be yeah. an arc of its own as they discover this one item and then the next item. And I, I'm enjoying writing it that way within the framework I set up in the planning stage before the pantsing stage. Um, now, we've only got about a couple minutes left. Can we give some thoughts on how to write a series if we haven't already covered in what each of you have said? Michael, or Aaron? Uh, I would Aaron? say either. You you want to? Uh, I'll say I'll say uh, one, one thing. One thing that I'll toss in um, is to remember uh, consequences and uh, where your characters are uh, at emotionally and in their development, and um, how the effects of the previous book affect them in in their current uh, adventure in their current yes. story. Hmm. So I'll say that that's not, that's definitely something to keep in mind of the uh, the continuation, yes. uh, the the continuity. It's Aaron? important. Uh, you've got a beginning, you got an end. You got to get the character from one point to another. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really the big point there. Um, with Luke Skywalker, friggin', he had to get from Tantooine to the celebration uh, with the Ewoks. <laughs> Everything in between, nobody gives a shit about. Uh, or Harry, Harry, <laughs> really, it didn't matter. It did not matter. He had to burn Vader at the cross. Uh, wait, uh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, or Harry Potter. 
It yet didn't again. matter. I want to <laughs> yeah. see the dancing teddy bears. Gosh darn right. it. <laughs> really? Harry, Ho- Harry Potter had to get from underneath those stairs to King's Cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the in-between is what's interesting. Mm-hmm. we got to figure that out. That's the hard part. Yeah. But if you don't know point A and Z, you got nothing. I like what Tajinch is saying here. Uh, yes. Not just the good guys, but uh, the bad guys and even the NPCs, if you can. That's true. Uh, Everyone's dynamic. Think of your characters as real people. Uh, the villain is the most important. Uh, the villain is the most interesting person in the play. Yeah, it tends to be. Here's <clears throat> what I'll say, and I'm gonna preface this with Avengers, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Iron Man, and Avengers. Tony Stark started out one way. Each movie, he had an individual character arc. You had a story arc, but he had growth. He had change. And Avengers kind of capped that. Um, Here's what uh, other thoughts I have on this is, uh, look, if you're going to take a short story and turn it into a book, that's great. If you're going to take a book and turn it into a series, that's awesome. Don't fill in the middle stuff with filler. Still yeah, don't make force it important. Yeah. And once you finish book one, reread book one and find those loose threads that you left laying on the ground that weren't really important, but now you could draw them into your later story. This is what I've done with those third-tier characters, the second-tier villains, and brought them into the next book. And now this person who is left out in the cold at the end of book one is now the villain in book two. And book three, the one that was left out in the cold of two. Aaron? Don't be afraid to drop litter on the ground and turn them into seeds. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Tinchinter says, I just had that yesterday. So when writing a series, cool. it's important to pay attention to what came before is what we're each saying in different ways. And those can be little bits of gold that when put together can make a beautiful piece of art. Yes. So... What I'm going to say is uh, we're about to wrap this up. Any closing thoughts on the topics, gentlemen? Michael, anything? Uh, no. <laughs> I kind of did closing my closing thought over. right there. Yeah, yeah. I think you're. I think it was. I, I think what you said was brilliant. You know, the bits of gold. We're creating art. You know, we are. Um, listen to the work. Be the type of author you need to be for the type of uh, art that you're creating. Um. Now, let's wrap this up. For anybody that has comments or thoughts, whether you saw this live on twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk, or whether you joined us on the podcast, you can always email us your thoughts that we could read on a later show at rightnightshow at gmail.com. That's right, W-R-I-T-E, night, N-I-G-H-T, show at gmail.com. And, uh... Also, uh, I want to let you know if you have any birthdays coming up for yourself or other people, let us know. We'll give them some birthday wishes on air. And happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. November birthday. Um, And uh, we do have some amazing topics coming up here, which uh, I'm going to tell you the topics we have coming up for next month here in just a moment. Um, Oh, there it is i got to pull up the uh, document here so I can grab some of these topics here. Um, scrolling down. Do, 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 do. I should have had this up and ready. So, in the next couple of uh, weeks, you're going to hear about book signings, how to insert badass quotes, um, writing for readers versus writing for viewers. And that's a very broad-spectrum topic that will be very interesting, as well as tropes, cliches, stereotypes, and archetypes, and the good and bad of all that. Oh, thank you, Tracy, for wishing me that happy birthday, throwing your bits. A couple of comments from uh, other folks who, as they were closing the show, Weirdwin, our moderator, thank you for being a moderator, by the way. I want to throw a quick thank you to folks here. I'll do that for moderators also. Weirdwin says, where's the moment the story is actually important? And Tajintra says, don't add things, just add things. Make them have a point. And thank you, Gary, for that for happy sure. birthday. I'll and those bits. Appreciate it, man. Your 
<laughs> That's Gary's call sign there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So don't forget to check out our other podcast, Talk of the Tavern, as well as Stealing for Survival. Stealing for Survival, if you like the fantasy genre. It is us, Aaron, myself, and a few others playing in the same fantasy world that I write my fantasy novels in. Um, I want to thank everybody for their bits tonight. I'm looking at you, Gary. I'm looking at you, Spacey Tracy. Thank you for that support and that love. Much appreciated. As well as everybody who subbed, hosted, raid, purchased merchandise, or supported on Patreon, such as Ethan Strauss and Triple U, and our subscribers via PayPal, which is Berta and Musical Wizardry and others. And most of all, thank you for everybody who joined us, whether you chatted or just hung out or listened to the podcast. And thank you to the moderators who are in chat, showing support by chatting, talking to others, interacting, and all that stuff. Oh, thank you to Ginter. More bits for me. Let's do some closing music. Let's get out of here. And uh, we will catch you on the next show. Good night, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you for joining author Travis I. Sivart and the other writers, content creators, and all-around amazing people for our discussion here on Right Now. Join us again soon, and until you do, make sure you create with passion, enjoy the journey, and remember, every night can be right now.